I'm going to do something today uh, that's a little different. And the Lord had me, show me something, and I promise you I'll make this make sense. You know, one of the things I've never been as a preacher or a pastor who was ever going to be confined to the way man said I should worship. I'm going to preach the word that the Lord gave me, and I'm going to give it to you the way he gave it to me, and I'm going to do things that I hope and I pray that will be staples and great points in your life that you will look back on and say that when I heard pastor preach that scripture, it took me here and I'll never forget that all the days of my life. This relationship that we have with Jesus Christ is one of one that builds. And so I, it is my prayer today <clears throat> that something happens in here today that will allow you to see things differently for the rest of your life. Amen. Amen. All right. So what am I what I'm going to do is have the uh my ushers I have them have an item I want everybody to have cuz I want you to write something on it. Amen. I'm going to ask the ushers to begin to pass that out, make sure everybody has it. I'm going to read you my scripture. It's going to make sense. Just say it's going to make sense. I promise you it's going to make sense. I just want everybody to have this. You're not going to you'll understand it. As my older saying would say you understand it better. By and by. Amen. Amen. My father-in-law loved that song. Bless his name. And if you need a pen, I'm going to get you one. I'm gonna, I am gonna. just want you to hold on to it for right now, and I'm going to show you something that the Lord has laid upon me. And actually, this may end up being part one of something, but I'll let the Lord kind of lead on that. Um you know, one of the interesting things about the Lord is that when you have a relationship with him, he can make turns whenever he wants to. Amen. And I do love that about him. Amen. Make sure. Amen. Y'all, y'all get a chance. Get Make sure the media team gives theirs. Leave some for the musicians, too, because, again, all of us, amen, are just that believers. Thank you, sir. All right, I'm going to read from the scripture and I'm going to tell you what this makes sense and I'm going to tell you what I want you to write on here. 2 Kings 16, I mean 2 Kings 6, verse 15. 2 Kings 6, 15 through 20 says this. And I just want you all to stay in the word for a minute. I told you, if you open up your heart, God will speak to you today. And, you know, it's interesting because sometimes the word we may not feel is for us because we so spiritual and we so high that we don't think that that's not for me. God said, but if you know me, you know, I don't do nothing without a purpose behind it. You look at creation, you can look at see everything that I made had a purpose behind it. It may not be for you right now in your mind. God said, oh, but that word is so for you. And I'm giving it to you now. Because I love you, and I want you to see something. Amen? All right, so it says this, Second King, chapter 6, verse 15 through 20. says, when the servant of the man of God got up and went out early the next morning, an army with horses and chariots had surrounded the city. Oh, no, my Lord, what shall we do? The servant asked. Now, he's talking to Elisha. Don't be afraid, the prophet answered. Those who are with us are more than those who are with them. And Elijah prayed, open his eyes, Lord, so that he may see. Then the Lord opened the servant's eyes and he looked and saw the hills full of horses and chariots of fire all around Elijah. As the enemy came down toward him, Elijah prayed to the Lord, strike this army with blindness. So he struck them with blindness as Elijah had asked. Elisha told them, this is not the road and this is not the city. Follow me and I will lead you to the man you're looking for. And he led them to Samaria. After they had entered the city, Elijah said, Lord, open the eyes of these men so they can see. Then the Lord opened their eyes and they looked and they were inside Samaria. I'm going to concentrate on verse 16 and 17. Don't be afraid, the prophet answered. Those who are with us are more than those who are with them. And Elijah prayed, open his eyes, Lord, so that he may see. 
Then the Lord opened the servant's eyes, and he looked and saw the hills full of horses and chariots of fire all around Elisha. I'm going to talk to you today from these words. Lord, open our eyes, seeing through God-colored glasses. What I want you to do is take the glasses that you got. I'm not putting them up on 3D. My wife already told me, what you doing? I expect to see something in 3D. Yeah, well, you, you can look all you want to. You ain't going to see nothing. But here's what I want you to do. Let me tell you why. On one side, you know how you take your glasses and you fold them, right? Here's the reason why, because I want you to remember this all the days of your life. And the reason why I want you to have this is because I want you to keep it. On one side, I want you to put, Lord, open our eyes or open my eyes. Make it personal. Lord, open my eyes. And then on the other side, that I may see what you want me to see. Lord, open my eyes that I may see what you want me to see. And as you're doing that, what I want you to think about is that a lot of times we've messed up because we moved based upon what we saw. I talked about Paul and when he came to him that the scales fell off his eyes. So now he could see. I don't want any of us in this place another day in our lives to live lives blind, but to begin to see what God wants us to see. So I don't care what you do with these. Now listen, some of y'all probably going to take them home and throw them away. That's fine. Whatever. I bought them with my points anyway, so we ain't make but here's what, here's what I know some of you going to do. Because I'm going to tell you what I'm going to do with mine. Mine going in my prayer closet. Because when, when Randall gets in the way, I need a little reminder. See, y'all not like me. I understand. Y'all super spiritual. Y'all holy folk. I'm just trying to make it day in and day out and try to keep my relationship with Jesus Christ intact. And there are some days that I, even going to my prayer closet, I need to be reminded that you're seeing this the way you see it. But I need for you to see things the way I see it. So, Lord, open my eyes. So, as we go forward, here's what's going on in the text. It's interesting. Elijah has a servant, and this is after Naaman and, and all that's going on. And even though God is not pleased with Israel, because they his folks, God still look out for them. I mean, any witnesses of that in here? Because, see, you know, if we're honest, it's been some times in our life where God sure enough ain't been pleased with us, but he still look out for us. Amen? I thank God that I grew up with parents. <laughs> Amen? Who weren't always pleased with me, but they still made sure I had what I needed. But I thank God that I serve a God who can look into my heart and see some stuff that may not be what he would want it to be, but he'll still love on me still. So, God still loved on Israel. And here's Elijah the prophet. And he's got a servant who comes out and he knows that they're making war. The king of Syria is making war against Israel. And even though Israel's on punishment, if you will, God still said, listen, I'm not going to let nobody mess with you. I might chastise you, but they got to keep their hands off you. Oh, I know y'all have been there too. I've had some days like that. And see, here's what happens in the church or what Christians sometimes is we think that it's us. No, it's not us. It's because of the fact of Christ that God still protects us. The servant sees what's going on. And he says, Lord, what shall we do? What, 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 what are we going to do? And Elijah reminds him, don't be afraid. He said, those who are with us or more than are with them. Now, here's what's going on, and this is one of the reasons why you need to have seasoned saints in your life. 
some folks who've walked with the Lord for a little bit, some people who have some spiritual maturity. Because Elijah could see what he couldn't see at the time. He said, don't worry about it. It's more with us than with them. I know what you see. But I'm not looking on the same plane that you're looking on. There's a different level that I'm looking on. It doesn't make me at a different level. It just means God has opened my eyes. God opened his eyes because of the calling that he had on his life, because of the faith that he had. God opened his eyes, but it wasn't about Elijah. This was about his people. It's amazing to me how many folk that don't understand that the gift and the call that God has given to you is not for you. It's so God can use you for other people. Not for you to lord it over them. Not for you to think more highly of yourself than you ought to. It's so you can help them get along. And look at what he says in verse 17. He says, and Elijah prayed. I want y'all to look at this. He says, open his eyes, Lord, so that he may see. This is the relationship that Elijah has with the Lord that he leverages for the good of a servant. See, you ought to use your relationship for the good of somebody else, not just to get what you can get from God. He says, open his eyes that he may see. But look at what he, look how God responded so quickly. Then the Lord opened the servant's eyes and he looked and saw the hills full of horses and chariots of fire all around. You see the miracle. He couldn't see what God had in store. Until Elijah prayed, and then God moved. That's the first miracle. Later on in the text that I read to you, it says that when the army came against them, Elijah prayed that God would blind them. And God did just that. See, there's a magnificent thing to having a relationship with God. When there's a call on your life, God will step in on your behalf. And look at how he did it. Now, you know, Elijah was in a mature place because these folk are coming against Israel. The text goes on. He says, he led them into Samaria. So by the time that God had removed, and when he got there, God, he had God remove the blindness from them. They were in enemy territory by the time it all shook out. And here's what took place. And it goes on. Even when you study in your Bible, you'll read that they didn't come against Israel like that ever again. It's amazing what God will do. That's what I'm trying to tell you. Your prayer got to be, Lord, open my eyes. Because once, God, you open my eyes, I'll watch you do miracles, things that nobody else could do. Lord, open our eyes. I'm going to give you a scripture from Jesus, and then I'm going to move into my points for right now. Matthew 6, 22, and I love this. I'm going to show you how important the eyes are. It's one of the reasons why I want you to write this down. I want you to keep this. It's because of the fact that you got to keep your eyes in the right place and you got to keep your eyes open. Jesus said this, Matthew 6, 22, the eye is the lamp of the body. But look at what he says, though. If your eyes are healthy, your whole body will be full of light. He said, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Whoa, whoa, whoa. He said, no, 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 the eye is the lamp of the body. He says, if your eyes are healthy, your whole body will be full of light. In other words, if your eyes can see what God wants you to see, if you begin to look through and walk through life in God-colored glasses, your whole body will be full of light. Here's really what he's saying. Elisha was one whose whose eyes were like that God desired so his whole body was full of light so that when he ran into one of his servants who couldn't see what he saw he could pray that God would open his eyes and his eyes would be open he could then turn right around and pray that God would blind his enemy and their enemy's eyes would be blinded we got to get to a place where we start walking through life with God colored glasses Stop seeing this stuff. Can, can, I'm going to stop here before I even get to my point. Listen to me. What God wants us to know in this house right now, you need to stop fretting about what's going on in the world. 
because you're looking at it through worldly glasses. If you think the world is winning, that's because you're looking at it through worldly eyes. If you start to look at it through spiritual eyes, through kingdom eyes, what you will see is you will begin to be saddened and sorry for the world because it's headed to destruction. And you will begin to pray for the people in the world that they will come to know Jesus. When you look at it through spiritual and kingdom eyes, what you say is, is that Jesus, and y'all know we used to sing this song when I was a little boy, Jesus is the answer for the world today. Beside him there is no other because Jesus is the way. See, he's still the answer. But you got to have kingdom eyes to see that. We as Christians have to follow the words of Jesus, that I understand our eyes are the lamp of the body, that if our eyes are healthy, our whole body will be full of light. How many people will come to Jesus if our eyes would just get right and get healthy? But here's the benefit. I want you all to understand something. You know, I've learned in my time walking with the Lord, and I still got a whole lot more to learn, and I got to grow a whole lot more. But here's what I've learned. God will help you if you want to be helped. I'm, I'm going to give you points, I promise you. you. you get something else to walk out of here with, but, but, but I need for you to see this. If you really want to see, God will heal you to see. In other words, he'll open up your eyes. You know, it's interesting, uh, blind Bartimaeus, the blind man inside the road, he says, Jesus said, what do you want me to do for you? Lord, I want to see. See how simple that was? See how quick it was? Because he knew. When I've lived in darkness, I can hear around me, but I can't put it together because I can't see. God, I've heard your word, but I can't seem to put it together. That's because you can't see it. I'm going to show it to you in a minute. When we can see what God desires for us to see, we'll walk better and we'll be better. All right. So when God opens my eyes. I'm going to give you five things I want you to see, but I'm going to take my time with them. When God opens my eyes, I see, number one, different dimensions. In other words, I see different aspects and attributes of God. Y'all with me? All right. So, so, so here's what I mean, and, and this is why. Can, can I just teach something for a minute that, that really disturbs a lot of people? A lot of people don't understand the Trinity. <laughs> it's one of the staples of Christianity. But a lot of people are like, I don't understand. How, how can God be one, and then how can Jesus pray to the Father? I, I don't understand. No, 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 I'm going to help you. All right, so, so, so here's what y'all want to, I want y'all to understand something. All right, so y'all see this, this is a triangle, right? Can y'all see that? How many sides to a triangle? Three. Three what? Equal sides. That's important. That's important. Three equal sides. But how many triangles do you see? One. One triangle, three equal sides. Wait a minute. So, one God, one side's Father, one side Son, one side Holy Spirit. Y'all understand Trinity? Here's where your confusion comes from. We're one-dimensional creatures trying to understand a three-dimensional piece. So if I had a three-dimensional triangle, then I could turn one side and I would see the Son. I could turn another side and I could see the Holy Spirit. I could turn another side and see the Father. Within them, they've never had an issue understanding who they were. We've had an understanding who they were, but there's still one God. So when the son that I understand is Jesus Christ prays to the father, he's praying in another dimension to the, to, to the father. But the father, because he's God, can, answer, can hear a prayer here and answer it there. Amen. Okay. And the Holy Spirit, same part. Y'all with me? Okay. Now, so then when I begin to see God, I now understand that my limited fleshly vision is one-dimensional. That's why I miss God. Because a lot of times all I see, I have what I call linear sight. All I see is what's right in front of me. And so I miss God at every turn. That's, that's why the word will tell you, trust in the Lord with all that heart and lean not to thine own understanding, but all thy ways acknowledge him and he'll direct that path. You know why? Because he's operating from a different vantage point in a different dimension. So what happens is, is that when all of a sudden the Lord opens my eyes, now I see a different dimension. That's what's happening in the text. 
real simple. The servant says, look, I see all of these enemies. What are we going to do? And you know what? Here's the thing. It's, many of us are like that. You know, all of a sudden, you hear a rumor. You know, it's going to be some layoffs. What are we going to do? What are we going to do? All you, what are we going to do? What are we going to do? What are we going to do? Hey, what are we going to do? What are we going to do? No, 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 no. Here's what we're going to do. I'm going to start looking through these. That's what I'm going to start doing. See, because here's what I know. If when I look at this, I realize, guess what? It was layoffs when I came from the place that brought me here, and it was God who I prayed to in a different dimension who took me from there to here. So guess what I'm getting ready to do? I see, when God opens my eyes, I see things different. There's a different dimension. There's a level that is higher than the level I'm dealing with. Can I show it to you in the Word? 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 1 through 3 says this. And this is Paul talking. He says, I must go on boasting, although there's nothing to be gained. I will go on to visions and revelations from the Lord. Okay? So, you know, they, they always challenging Paul about his Christianity, about his walk. And every now and then he had to put him in a place about who God said he was. Verse 2, he says, I know a man in Christ who 14 years ago was caught up to what? The third heaven. Whether it was in the body or out of the body, I do not know. God knows. And I know that this man, whether in the body or apart from the body, I do not know. But God knows. What he was saying was, is that God gave me an experience and an encounter that was far above the dimension I live in. See, when you have come to know Jesus, when you have walked in miracles and you have walked in blessings, God has done things that don't make sense on an earthly plane. And the reason why he has done it is so that you will know that there's a different dimension to it. When he opens your eyes, you will see the aspects and the attributes of God in a way that you have never seen them before. In other words, you might not know that God can raise the dead until somebody flatlines. But then when I see a heartbeat again, oh, bless the name of the Lord. See, I saw because I was in prayer and in prayer, I spent, I sent something to one dimension and he responded in a different one. Oh, you got to look at this. This is nothing more than what prayer is. When you're... You shouldn't be praying and not understanding that you're not praying to right here. You're praying to the throne of God and God in his throne will respond and he will transcend all things. Time and space, planets and stars to come and see about your problem. If you've ever had an answered prayer, you ought to you ought to be able to see now. God, my eyes have been open because here's what I've learned. When I prayed to you, you actually responded. Can I help y'all though real quick? I'm going to give you this. I ain't going to put no points. I ain't going to have my points on this. A no is a response. I know y'all don't like to hear that. Until, let, let, let me explain it to you though. See, you got, you got to stop looking at it. Again, you got to look at it through a different dimension. When you come to know him, you understand then that a no from God is corrective protective, and directive. So when God says no, God said, no, you ain't ready for that. You don't, uh -uh. you haven't lived to warrant that just yet. That's corrective. It's directive. God said, no, no, no. If I tell you no here, it'll actually make you go here. It's like a detour sign, right? And it's protective, God said, because if I tell you yes, you're getting ready to go down a road that's going to destroy you. So now, because I'm not looking at it as like he's Santa Claus with a worldly perspective that when God told me no, that means he don't love me. When I look at it because he's opened my eyes, when God tells me no, he is co being corrective, protective, and directive. In other words, he actually loves me because he responded to my request with a no. See, you guys, this, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm telling y'all because I live this. This is where your spiritual maturity goes. When I was an immature Christian, when God tell me no, I paddle a while. I know y'all don't do that. I get mad. Well, God, I don't understand. But when you start to raise and he opens your eyes, man, there's some stuff that God told me no about that when I finally got there, I said, Lord, I can't thank you enough for the no back then. I'm trying to tell you, we think worldly vision, linear vision says, I just want to go to God and get what I want. But mature vision says, when I look through the world through God colored glasses, it says, when I go to God in prayer, I just want to get what God wants. 
Amen. I'm just trying to tell you, when you can get there, your eyes starting to be open. Because what happens is you begin to see that God actually loves and cares about me. But here's the thing to celebrate. Let me say this in the moon to the next thing. Here's the thing to celebrate about the no. He answered your prayer. <laughs> Listen, you know, and y'all, y'all know, I'm, I'm, I, Lord knows I am a work in progress. But he that begun a good work. Amen. Praise the Lord. I do believe he's going to bring it to completion. I told God, I don't like sitting in traffic. I don't like getting dressed up. And I told y'all this, I'm going to move real quick. When I was looking for jobs and interviewing and stuff like that and all that kind of stuff, I told the Lord, if I ain't going to get the job, then don't even have them call me about no interview. I'm just, just say, help him, Lord. I mean, I'm just trying, I'm just being honest with y'all. Now, listen, listen. You know what the Lord did? He said, okay, cool. Gotcha. You ain't going to have to sit in traffic. You ain't going to have to get dressed up. You ain't got to worry about it. So I get a rejection letter in the mail one day and get an attitude. God said, hold on, bro. Wait a minute. Hold on now. He said, now, wait a minute. You asked me. And I said, you know what I said right there by the mailbox? I said, Lord, you know what? You sure do answer prayer. Now let's go talk for real now. See, no, no, no. You got to understand. You got to learn to thank him. Because here's what that means. He heard you and he responded to you. Amen. All right, number two. Here it is. When God opens my eyes, I see different displays or a, a different display or displays. In other words, in other words, what I begin to see are faith facts and not fear. You know, here's the thing. Um, when, when the Lord opens your eyes, you begin to see things that are factually there that you can't deny him. See, when, when, I, when I, you know, I remember um, uh, going out when um, Brianna Demetrius got married and the Lord blessed us to be able to go out of Hawaii. When I looked out there one day, I said, I don't care what nobody says. No human being could ever make anything this pretty especially with out of nothing. And I said, you can't tell me evolution did it because evolution is nothing but, a, but randomness and chaos that's supposed to bring order and beauty like this. Come on now. In other words, what I saw was I saw a display of his glory. I saw God's display of how magnificent he was in creation. And so when he opens your eyes, can I, can I really help somebody in here? Some of you are living with low self-esteem, but you belong to the king. If you go look in the mirror through some kingdom eyes, you'll see how beautiful you are. Oh, yeah. See, the problem is you comparing yourself to what society says you should be. God said, I ain't make but one of you. You are one of a kind original masterpiece. You're beautiful. God said, if, if you'll open up your eyes and see what I see, you'll see how magnificent I made you. As a matter of fact, you can search the world for all eternity, and you'll never find another one like that in the mirror. Oh, you ought to be happy about that. Now, listen, I love me some Randall, so I'm happy about the way the Lord made me. I, I, don't, even, I don't have no complaints about that. I'm not going to be arrogant about it, but I'm going to be thankful. Amen. See? Oh, okay. Here it is. Psalm 119, 18 says this. Open my eyes that I might see wonderful things in your law. In other words, God said, if you'll just even open up my word, I'll display some stuff to you. I'll show you me and I'll show you how I do what I do. Here's the reason why that's important for him to open up your eyes. Because when he opens up my eyes and I begin to live through God colored glasses, what I realize is, is that it won't take long for God to display his power in my life. <laughs> Amen. Number three, when God opens my eyes, I see different definitions. I see the who, what, why, and the how. In other words, you know, I struggle with this point here. Uh, Colin and Marcus appreciate that because, you know, pixels are in the camera. I was going to call it something regarding pixels because pixels, what they do is they illuminate. In other words, they make a picture or they make a video. They make it brighter and better. Y'all with me? You know, uh, y'all remember some of y'all that's old as me. Y'all remember the TV with, you know, the snow. Praise the Lord. Amen. You know, with the rabbit is, amen, and somebody, y'all had, you know, you had a baby. They go over there and stand there and hold, hold it right there, right there, so mama could watch TV. Amen. But then they came out with something, amen, called color television. Amen. And then cable. And so the cable allowed for the color television to look better. Y'all with me? And then all of a sudden they came out with something called high definition. And when you saw high definition, you were like, oh, wow, what is that old stuff? Amen. Because I can see clearer. And now they got something they call 4K Ultra HD. That if I'm watching the game, 
I can not only see sweat on somebody at the free throw line, I can see their pimples. Amen. Y'all with me? No, no, no. Y'all stay with me now. Stay with me. In other words, the definition has gotten so clear that a close-up does not leave anything. Amen? Unclear. So when I get closer to God and he opens up my eyes and the intimate relationship I have is not the church one that I had that was black and white. It's not the one when I was a baby Christian that was just coloring cable. It's not the one that I had when I was growing up and it was just HD. Now all of a sudden, God and I are in this intimate place because he's opened up my eyes and I got ultra HD. Elijah had ultra HD. That's why he was able to say, don't worry about it. It's more with us than with them. See, you need some folk in your life. I'm trying to tell you, you need some people in your life around you so that you can grow to that place. Well, guess what? Even Listen, mamas and daddies. Husbands and wives, y'all in the household, y'all got to be the ones to tell the babies, don't worry about it. It's more with us than it is with them. Oh, I wish I had. Oh. Yeah, 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 yeah. See, see, so when the definition gets clearer, then I can see who God is. I can see what God is up to, right? I can see why he's doing it. But then guess what? Here's what God will do sometimes. He'll give you a glimpse of even how he does it. Now, if you want something that will blow your mind is to sit and watch how God makes a move. How he will use even unbelievers to just do something that, listen to me now, that they would sinfully, naturally do. And it will turn a situation into your favor because you're on God's team. I watch God do it. I watch unbelievers who don't even know why they like me, don't like folk who look like me. And we'll still say, you know what, it's something about you I just can't explain. Don't worry about it. I got ultra HD. I can tell it to you if you're ready to hear it. <sighs> Amen. See, no, no, no. It's a beautiful thing. Let me show it to you. Psalm 25, 14 says this. The secret of the Lord. See, God, God says, I reveal some, some clear stuff. The secret of the Lord is with them that fear him. And he will show them his covenant. Here's what he says. Here's why I get this great, this, this great definition. Is because what God says is, when you and I are walking together, I will begin to show you why I love you, why I called you, why I walk with you even when you're trying to walk away from me, why I still use you even though you really are unusable. He says, I'll show you my covenant. Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll make it plain. He would say to Isaac because of Abraham. He would say to Jacob because of Abraham and Isaac. He would say to Joseph because of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. In other words, he was saying, let me show you the covenant that I made is the reason why I do what I do. Amen? So, so here's the thing. While grandmamas and mamas can't get you into heaven, but because of the covenant God had with them, it sure kept you. Mm. If you had some praying folk in your life, if you had some people who knew who he was, because of the covenant, he didn't wipe you out. When God opens my eyes, I see, number four, I see different details or detail. In other words, a pure picture of his presence. In other words, what I know is that, and, and this is, I'm going to give you a scripture here that, that really God just showed me something in it. So beautiful. But what happens is I see the pure picture of his presence. When God opens your eyes and you begin to walk life through God-colored glass, you begin to try to look at things the way God says, see things the way God sees them, wanting the end result that God wants. What happens is, is that the presence of God becomes so pure in your life and so present that it becomes really almost something you almost can't handle because of the fact of what he's doing is he's showing you his kingdom. All right, I'm going to show it to you. John 3 and 3. Look at what Jesus said to Nicodemus. He said, Jesus answered and said to him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. When I become born again, I'm now entering into this intimate relationship. In other words, he shows me household stuff because I went from being his creation to being his child. Y'all with me? So what happens is before then, I'm God's creation. But when you read in John 1, he says he gave them the power to become. You don't give somebody the power to become sons or daughters if they already were sons or daughters. It's by Jesus Christ that I became that. So now that I'm born again, he now begins to show me the kingdom. Here's the thing. And I grew up, this is my experience, not yours. I grew up in church thinking that I would understand kingdom things when I got to heaven. 
Y'all with me? Till I read this. And God showed it to me. He said, no, 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 no. When you become born again, you'll see the kingdom of God. That's the kingdom here and the kingdom there. And guess what? Here's the thing. Because I told you in Psalm 25, he said, I'll show you my covenant. He'll show you the connection between the two. See, the old church that I grew up in, or my, my experience was very simple, was all we did was wait on the by and by. But what God did out of his revelation, because he opened up my eyes, he showed me, no, there's work to do here. And there's a kingdom that I'm building here on earth as it is in heaven. So you don't have to wait on the by and by. I want to use you now. And then finally, number five, when God opens my eyes, I see different directions. I see his plan, his purpose, and his path. You know, one of the things for me, very simply, is 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 7, and you can go back to it. It says, for we walk by faith and not by sight. Wait a minute, preacher. Wait a minute. Ooh, you've been telling me I need to see like God. See, no, no, no. See, here's the thing. That's actually a worldly way of looking at that scripture. Walking by sight is walking by worldly sight. Walking by faith is walking by kingdom eyes. So we don't walk by our linear fleshly sight. We walk by faith. And walking by faith is walking by what God has opened up and allowed me to see. Amen? See, Elijah understood and had to take his servant from looking at things through worldly eyes to looking at them by faith. Elijah was walking by faith. Servant walking by sight. That's why he was afraid. So what happens is when I begin to walk by faith, I begin to walk into things that even though nobody else might not be able to see them or many may not be able to see them, I can see them. That's why I still take my steps. Oh, that's so good right there. Listen, when you walk in my faith, you still take your steps, even though it does not make worldly sense for you to do so. Amen. Listen, you're a part of a church. Those of you who are members of this church, you're a part of a church that is walking by faith and not by sight. If I had put it on sight, it never would have happened. If I put it on how Randall saw it, it never would have happened. But it was by faith. And I knew that if I just tried to walk in integrity, tried to walk right, teach the word as God said it, and see things the way God said it, that God would send some special folks who would do the same. What you see now wasn't what we had when we started. That's what I want you to understand. When you walk by faith and not by sight, your physical sight takes a back seat to your faith. Pull up all five of my points there for me. Thank you, Bree. When God opens my eyes, I want y'all to see this. Real simple. I see different dimensions. I see different displays. I see different definitions. I see different de details, and I see different directions. The Lord says, I'll lead you and guide you if you can just walk by faith. That's why when I'm blinded, I'm not worried because God will hold my hand and walk me through. Amen? His word is a limit to my feet and light into my pathway. I'm not concerned about what my physical sees. Amen? You know Peter was walking on water until he started getting caught up in what was physically, he physically saw. When he, had, when he was looking at it through God-colored glasses and his eyes were on Jesus, he was doing what humans aren't supposed to do. Y'all with me? All right. So here, here's the thing. I just want y'all to remember this. If nothing else today, more importantly, Brian, can you print on my slide? I want y'all to listen. You take those glasses and understand that for you, 3D means something different. Amen? That I understand the dimensions of the three that I serve. That's the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, and those three are one. If I begin to see this world the way that they see it, then I'm going to walk better, I'm going to be stronger, and there's no enemy in hell that will be able to stop me. So our prayer is, Lord, open our eyes that we may see what you want us to see. Amen? Now, now, can I talk to you as a pastor real quick? Here's what I want to talk to you as a pastor, Spirit of God. God going to take us further. Hear me. But we got to walk by faith and not by sight. I've been told already, but I don't believe it. I've been told this from day one. First of all, they ain't gonna, they ain't gonna, you, know, you ain't going to be able to build no church in Alpharetta. You ain't going to be able to build no church with no predominantly African-American congregation in Alpharetta. Devil is a lie. I ain't worried about that. God put us in Alpharetta, and God owns a cattle on a thousand hills. God has held up a piece of property for us already. I'm just trying to tell you. I don't care what it looks like right now. 
I'm telling you what God is going to do. And this is how you match this up. When you have been a part of this church, look at what God has done that said couldn't be done in you. Look at what God has said couldn't be done in your life. Look at what God has said couldn't be done has been done in your kids, your marriage. Listen to what God has done. So we're going to walk by faith and not by sight. And my prayer as a pastor is first, Lord, open up my eyes that I might see what you want to see. And then, Lord, please open up our eyes. Amen. I want you to hold on to these. Listen, listen, hear me. When you get to a place where you start to doubt, to question, and you know you're looking at it in your flesh, you need to remember, Lord, open up my eyes. And if I can see this through God-colored glasses... I'll see victory and not defeat. Amen. Y'all stand out of the building. Interesting piece. Elisha, his servant, saw certain defeat. Lord, what shall we do? What we, what we going to do? All these folks coming. I mean, we're not going to be able to. There's more with us. That is with them. And I'm going to say this to you, just so you understand. And I'll probably deal with this a little bit more next week. Here's what I want you to get. What he saw was God's army already in position for victory for his people who were on punishment, by the way. I, I need to emphasize that. It wasn't like Israel was so righteous at the time. But they were his. And God gave him victory. He had already lined up for him. Because he wasn't going to let somebody else come against him. If God was going to chastise Israel, it was going to be him doing it, not nobody else. So you need to be thanking God for the grace that we all share in. Because a lot of us own punishment right now. Amen. And God's still delivering like only he can. Lord, open our eyes that we might see. And what God says is, I want you to understand, I'm here for you. And I'll be here for you. Let me make this call. Two calls in this house. If there be one in this house who does not know Jesus as their Lord and their Savior, you've not confessed him, you've not opened up your heart to him, you have not given your life to him, I invite you to come and receive him right now. Lord, it is our prayer. That if there be one in this house, you'll open up their eyes. That they might see that living the way they're living is only headed to destruction. But if they could begin to see it the way you see it, it would lead them into their destiny from you.